Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. Uh, so, so far we have seen that uh, uh, basically the uh, the mechanics uh, by which uh, this turbulence uh, 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 can essentially uh, enter inside the flame structure and distort it. So, we have seen that uh, that in different regimes that is uh, especially de demarcated by Karlovitz number. So, when the Karlovitz number is small, so the uh, essentially the laminar structure of the flame is retained. Uh, uh, of course, uh, it can be stretched uh, that is uh, you see and we have also discussed this concept of stretch in the sense that when you have this uh, tangential uh, stretch uh, when you have essentially flow non-uniformities along the tangential plane of the of a flame surface or when you have a flame that is curved and which is moving with the flame speed. So, in that case is of course, uh, uh, you can have flame stretch and uh, in those regions basically when the Kalevich number is less than 1, we can essentially consider this flames the local flame let the local flame structure to be essentially that of a stretched laminar flame ok. Because when the Kalevich number is less than 1, your flame is bent, your flame may not be straight or planar laminar as such, it can be bent but uh, and there can be some flow non uniformities also. So, the flame can be stretched uh, so which will essentially lead to increasing the flame surface area, but that does not mean that the turbulence has essentially essentially created uh, some structural change inside the flame ok. Now, of course, that can happen uh, we have seen from the regime diagrams that uh, this just this uh, considering or abstracting this uh, a turbulent flame as an ensemble of stretched laminar flamelet. Uh, as you, as I have said that this works in a regime where the Karlovitz number is actually less than 1 or down column number greater than 1, but in a regime where the Karlovitz number is very large this really does not work well ok. Because uh, it is not only the, the flames are stretched of course, they are stretched that is true, but in more than there is the, the fact that they are stretched there is some inside disturbance of uh, were created by turbulence that is turbulent flames turbulent eddies or uh, small scale turbulence in the sense that Kolmogorov size eddies can enter inside the uh, flame structure and create disruption, but you have to understand that the flame is just not a benign um, object, it is not a passive structure, it has got strong heat release. So, when there is strong heat release, there is strong gas acceleration also. So, it is possible that uh, the turbulence can also be uh, destroyed by the flame. So, it is a two way coupling process, ok. So, on one hand, you can have uh, turbulence. Uh, impinging on a flame and stretching wrinkling folding it and even changing its structure at multitude of length and time scales. On the other hand you have basically can have a regimes uh, or you can have uh, basically have a uh, situations where the turbulence can be essentially also destroyed or can be changed by the by the heat release rate and subsequent gas expansion by the flame. So, these two are basically competing effects and these two are have been uh, kind of in a simplified manner very much simplified manner we have essentially simplified simplified them um, and this competing effects in this regime diagrams ok. Now, then uh, of course, we discuss the concept of stretch and next we go into this flamelet norm models for uh, uh, premix combustion in turbulence. Um, so, now the uh, basic assumption of the flamelet models is that that basically these are typically applicable for low Karlovitz number large Ramkola number flames that is um, basically these are applicable for situations where we do not consider any disturbance or distortion of the inner flame structure or the, or the preheat zone structure or the reaction zone structure of the flame by the impinging turbulence. So, we just consider that the flame is essentially wrinkled and it is wrinkled at a multitude of length and time scales and uh, we and that that uh, of course, uh, has a still it changes the global properties of the flame because you know, once it is the flame is wrinkled its surface area is much larger and then on the surface area is larger then it can consume more fuel uh, fuel air mixture per unit time and it can on statistically it can propagate at a much faster rate. So, uh, still this that description is not trivial uh, it has to be one has to consider that if that things, but uh, here uh, we will consider essentially this um, uh, uh, this flame net models because um, those are much simpler and uh, explaining uh, going into this uh, regimes uh, where uh, where the turbulence distorts the flame structure that is that requires much more complicated or complex uh, analysis of uh, um, turbulence flame interaction. 
So, here we will restrict ourselves to the flame rate models. Now, there are basically two types of flame rate models that we will discuss and the inherent assumption is that that, uh, that the flame has infinitesimally thin, infinitely, uh, infinitely uh, infinitesimally thin um, which correspond to infinitely fast, uh, uh, infinitely fast chemistry uh, limit. So, it is basically infinitesimally thin rather than infinite, uh, infinite decimally thin okay, and um, uh, which correspond to the infinitely fast chemistry limit. Uh, so, this is the assumption that uh, the flame is very very thin compared to any structure of uh, any turbulent flame structure. So, it is the characteristic length scale of the flame is smaller than any uh, turbulent structure and uh, it corresponds to the infinitely fast chemistry limit. Okay. And, uh, so, the flame rate models are based on the two things that is uh, uh, the progress uh, that is a scalar variable g and the progress variable c and um, basically the inherent assumption is that we do not even need this thing that is uh, it is need not be infinitesimally uh, uh, correspond to fast chemistry. We just need to consider this, this flames that are infinitesimally thin uh, compared to the any structure and turbulence. So, and this we will consider for um, uh, basically two approaches one is for the we will use this g equation model and the progress variable model. Okay. So, we will we'll come into this what this G equation are and uh, these are the two basically uh, uh, models that we will consider the, the, uh, the uh, scalar variable G and the progress variable C. Okay. Now, uh, we will come to this, but uh, the C is essentially a non dimensional temperature difference and this is T minus T u divided by T v minus T u. So, uh, as you can see that uh, the C can only attain a, this T since this T can attain a minimum value of T u. So, that that time C is equal to 0 when T is equal to T u and it can attain a maximum value of 1 that is uh, that will happen when T is equal to T v. Okay. So, the between C basically varies between um, 0 and 1. Okay, and um, this is what we will consider, but before that we go into this G equation. Okay. Now, this is a little conceptually very interesting thing. So, uh, the thing is that you have seen uh, once again we go back uh, keep going back to this thing. Uh, uh, you see here uh, this is um, what we are showing here is essentially uh, surface that we have taken out of the flame. Okay. So, the actual flame if we um, is essentially thick. So, if we just uh, so, uh, 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 so the actual flame is um, thicker. So, it can be like uh, if you uh, take the structure it will be something like this Okay, uh, uh, there will be like a, um, uh, uh, it will be a thicker object, but uh, what we have taken is that we have just taken one surface out of it okay. and one surface out of it and just uh, showing that how the turbulence interacts with the flame. So, what if we consider that the flame is infinite infinitesimally thin compared to turbulence and that the entire reaction okay, is happening inside this infinitesimally thin object. Of course, it is um, it is a two dimensional uh, it is a, com com a complex surface. So, uh, where this of course, the thickness of the surface is infinitesimally thin and the reaction is concentrated in that infinitesimally thin uh, surface mm, and this surface Okay. How do you determine or describe a surface? As you know, a surface can be determined by a level set value. So, what that means is that, that if you have a surface like this, I say that the, 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 this function g x y z t, this is determined by the surface that g x y z t is equal to 0 or is equal to is equal to a, with any constant g 0 as such. But we let us say this we determine by the surface as g x y z t is equal to 0. As a very good example is that, that if you want to determine a, uh, if you have a sphere in space how do you how do you describe it? You describe it by this thing that you say that it is x square plus y square plus z square is equal to uh, some, um, some uh, uh, say if the radius of the circle is uh, 5 unit square is equal to 5 square. Okay. So, this is uh, my um, uh, say this is equal to um, is equal to 25. Okay. So, this then then this this whole thing is my g. Okay. So, then I describe the surface of the sphere as g x y z at the because if it is not moving uh, as essentially x square plus y square plus z square um, okay. and uh, I can put 25 also on this side and this is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is how then this then the whole the surface of this uh, surface of the sphere is essentially determined by this thing g is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is how you essentially uh, come to this G equation description. This is essentially a level set description. Uh, so, you consider a uh, different, um, uh, so you consider a function which is distributed in space and by selecting this ISO values of these functions that is in this case the ISO value of the function is 0. Uh, by selecting uh, proper ISO values of this function you determine uh, you can you can describe a complex surface, you can describe a convoluted sh shape of the surface. All right. So, uh, 
this is how you can go with this uh, g equation uh, description okay it's essentially uh, the equation governing a proper uh, is essentially a equation for governing a propagating surface um, uh, in a flow okay so this is uh, evolves from this level set description by uh, osher and sethian uh, uh, in the uh, late 90s and early 2000s and then this uh, combustion community adopted this so we said that that suppose um, uh, you you have um, suppose you, you if you go back to the previous description of the laminar flame structure so in the infinite infinite assembly thin reaction limit it is this um, this is a structure so this is tu this is tb if you go to two dimension it will be a surface like this okay and now if you have turbulence this surface can be like this that is what we just uh, saw right mm, this one can be a complicated surface and we determine this surface as g x this is a position vector x t is equal to 0 okay. So, this is the description okay of course it, this is can also be j described as g x t equal to 0. So, initially my surface was uh, whatever that is uh, uh, that this this is uh, this surface whether it is planar or convoluted this is described by my function which is g x t is equal to um, um, is equal to g x t is equal to 0 all right. So, um, uh, now uh, we can uh, now we say that this uh, when this uh, uh, this G is uh, this is uh, the flame surface okay the, the flame surface which is essentially a reacting propagating surface of course in this G equation description we do not consider any reaction as such uh, but um, it is a propagating surface okay. We say that this uh, this and the surface is described by this level set value of 0. So, this way we say that this uh, this surface uh, is essentially um, is given by G equal to 0 G x equal to 0. 0 mm, and uh, this here the my g value is less than 0 and in the product side which is downstream of the surface my uh, my g value is uh, greater than 0. So, this is this is the description. The, so, if this is my my flow inside a channel and this is my my flame uh, which is uh, given by g x t is equal to 0. So, th there also can be g values here there also can be well level set values here. So, these are given by all g x t less than 0 and these are given by g x t greater than 0. So, this is the g x t uh, g uh, equation description and of course, at each this point mm, the surface moves and the surface moves uh, of course, with a local flame speed which is equal to the velocity of the surface relative to the local fluid velocity ok. So, this is the flame speed with which is move and uh, it is uh, the uh, in the normal direction of course. Okay. So, this uh, surface is propagating with the local flame speed in the uh, direction normal to itself. So, this is the mm, thing and then we can of course, um, mm, uh, this thing that it uh, we see that it propagates the local displacement flame speed along normal vector and how can you find the normal vector? The normal vector is find out like minus g divided by mod of grad g. It can be true is it is true for any uh, uh, scalar function uh, of for which you are seeking the normal ok is the definition. So, this is the description that you have an uh, this is the flames uh, if this is my chamber uh, this is my configuration you have uh, this is my g x t is equal to 0 um, ok this is my flame and uh, this is my here my uh, my uh, g x t is equal to 0 and on the left hand side we have unburned gas you have g is equal to negative uh, that is the level set value of g is equal to negative ok uh, uh, in this one and on the right hand side we have bond gas where the g is essentially positive. And here uh, the uh, it is uh, basically propagating due to two effects the surface is moving and convoluting or stretching whatever you call whatever is happening is due to two effects number one there can be it is stretching or, or or wrinkling due to the flow non uniformities which is created by if there is non uniform flow upstream upstream that is if there is a turbulent flow upstream um, which is non uniform um, uh, instantaneously and in point wise uh, so this uxt so it is moving due to two effects number one in uxt and which is imposed by turbulence and it's moving due to its own propagation propagation due to sd and xt so these two effects must be inbuilt into the into the G equation model all right. So, then we need to find out essentially what is the G equation model. So, what we can do is that just like we uh, we can do the Taylor series expansion. So, we can write this thing that is uh, G at um, x plus delta x and at t plus time delta t we expand around the G value at x and t ok and that is given by since G is a function of both x and t it is given by partial d uh, partial uh, d g partial d t or dou g dou t times d t plus 
delta x times gradient of g plus higher order terms which we neglect. Okay, so, this is a power first order Taylor series expansion. Okay. Now, so this is we can write of course for any function and g is of course a function. Okay. Now, since what you have to remember is that that the value of g at x plus delta x and t plus delta t if it is of the same surface okay, then the value of g does not change. So, to give you an example this is my chamber. So, this is my say g x t and this is equal to 0. Now, when this surface will move okay, or I will use the same color actually. We will say after some time or in a very short after some small delta t or some big delta t it moves g x plus delta x times t plus delta t. Okay. It has moved this much. The value it will take because it is a level set function is still equal to 0. Another good example is to, to describe you is this thing that suppose you had a sphere. Okay, it is a spherical flame which is given by g as you remember x t is equal to 0 and this g is essentially here we know the function in case in this case we do may not know the exact functional form because it is not a regular surface okay, this is equal to 0. Now, after some time say this surface this flame expanded and it become like this. Okay. So, this is g x bar t x and this value is still equal to 0 because it is the same level set surface. Okay. So, the value of the value that is taken by g, the value that is taken by g this function that does not change which is equal to 0 or which is equal to g 0. Okay. In this particular case it is equal to 0 which is essentially a constant. Okay. If you are denoted by g 0 it is uh, you can do it is an arbitrary value or if you denote it by 0 it is 0. And if you take the limit say delta t tends to 0 let us put it 0 itself instead of uh, g 0 that is uh, creating a confusion. Okay. So, if you now take a limit in this thing, so these two terms basically cancel out because these are both equal to 0. So, we are left with essentially do g. So, in this thing we are left with essentially do g do t times delta t plus delta x times grad g is equal to 0. This is if we take delta t downstairs what is this delta x delta t? This is nothing but the rate of propagation of the surface itself. Okay. And now, if we take limit delta t tends to 0, okay, which is equal to V f that is the velocity of the flame. This is not the flame speed. Okay. This is the velocity of the flame surface or the velocity of this surface g. Okay. And now, if we decompose this, now if we decompose this, this d x d t is nothing but it contains contribution from two things. Why does the flame move? The flame moves because it, there is a flow fluid velocity or because of the and or because of the local flame speed. So, u plus s d okay. and n is equal to minus n is equal to n vector is equal to minus grad g divided by mod of grad g. So, then if we just plug this thing here what we get is this thing the g equation dou g dou t plus u vector 
grad g is equal to s d times mod of grad g. Okay. The mod of grad g comes from this normal actually. So, this is the g equation. All right. Now, using this what is the advantage? Using this you can describe basically the this is essentially a field equation. Okay. Using this you can describe the motion of a complicated flame surface or the evolution of a propagating surface under the influence of a non-uniform flow fit. Okay. That is the thing. You can describe any complicated surface with this. So, this G equation is essentially a Hamilton Jacobi equation similar to the uh, and uh, is essentially one uh, outcome of the level set methods. Okay. So, this is the, the G equation um, um, uh, modeling that we have uh, uh, taken up. Okay. So, now uh, this thing we can uh, you can we can use essentially to uh, to describe uh, the motion of of a convoluted surface and uh, this is this is uh, typically once again if you go back here uh, that uh, this sort of motion uh, which you see that uh, is essentially uh, once again I keep coming back this because a beautiful video which captures essentially the how turbulence interacts with the flame. So, you can capture this kind of a um, uh, surface uh, 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 formation and deformation uh, that happens uh, due to this um, uh, due to presence of turbulence. Um, uh, and uh, using the G equation, though this is not a G equation as such. This this video is obtained. This uh, video is obtained by um, uh, this video is obtained by doing dynamical simulation with all detailed chemistry and everything. But you can capture this sort of uh, of, of 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 the of motion of a flame using the 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 the, uh, the G equation. So that is the very powerful uh, nature of G equation. And uh, next we will take up the uh, the the progress value variable. Uh, uh, um, uh, modeling. So, you see uh, uh, we have just obtained this uh, G equation and uh, uh, one most important uh, uh, term in this uh, G equation is the right hand side okay, which is actually a non-linear term that is S d times mod of grad G. But here you need uh, basically you see this is you have this presence of this uh, local displacement flame speed. Okay. It is the local speed with which the flame propagates with respect to the local flow velocity in the direction of the uh, local surface normal. But now the thing is that what is the value of this uh, SD? Okay, what is the what is uh, what is the flame displacement speed? Now, if it was a planar laminar flame mixed flame, okay, then this SD would have been the exact value of the planar laminar flame speed that we had obtained. Okay. So, if you remember that we obtained this value f 0 square is equal to lambda by C p times B c I mean I will not go into that it was uh, uh, f 0 square is equal to lambda by C p times B c times uh, e to the power of minus of R Henius number divided by Lewis number uh, times Lewis number divided by Zelda which number squared okay. uh, divided by Zelda which number. Uh, so, this was uh, uh, this op we that was our expression for the planar laminar flame speed and uh, we have obtained uh, expressions for uh, we have obtained uh, experimentally or using computations we can obtain uh, the this uh, this values for different uh, for more uh, com more complex situations where you consider detailed chemistry. Okay. So, that is this is this is one can obtain a value of S L 0, but this S D this displacement flame speed of a convoluted flame structure like this okay, in a turbulent flow field which is of interest is not equal to S L 0. Because of course, you can see that the flame is not planar and B the th fact is that this um, there is there can be a curvature for example, you see here there, there is a curvature and of course, uh, because you have uh, there can be flow non-uniformities also. So, when you have these these two things uh, then the what you have what you have seen already that there is a flame stretch. And what this flame stretch does, okay, what this flame stretch does, especially when the Lewis number is non unity, is that it causes a different, it causes a differential diffusion of thermal flux, of heat flux, and the scalar diffusion, okay. And uh, so, the, the, the scalar flux, the species flux, which carries essentially the, the, the enthalpy of, of formation, okay, uh, as well as the, the thermal flux, so these are not matched. Okay. As a result of that the local temperature changes and when the local temperature changes the local flame speed also changes. So, as a result of this uh, the when, a, when a flame is stretched and the Lewis number is not equal to 1 then depending on the sign of stretch whether it is positive or negative and depending on whether the Lewis number is greater or greater than 1 or less than 1 the local flame speeds can change. 
So, this is a very important thing. So, when the local flame speeds change, of course, you see that your uh, displacement flame speed is not equal to the planar lamina flame speed and you need to basically have models or basically have to have some database by which you can have this local displacement flame speed. So, of course, you see that in the G equation that there are two things of course, uh, that you have the uh, there are two few things actually you have the transient term, you have the convection term and you have this uh, propagation term. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, this is the transient term, uh, this is the uh, convection term and this is the propagation term. And so, there are two units which are required. So, one unit is of course, uh, one input, two inputs that are required. So, one input is of course, you have to specify the local fluid velocity. Okay. So, this can be obtained by solve, solving either the continuity and the momentum equation simultaneously or if you have a solved uh, U field, you can put that. But of course, then you cannot have a thing that when the you know, where you should uh, your U should change. So, it is better to basically solve this U and uh, this uh, coupled with the momentum equation and then you can essentially uh, then, in, uh, then you can have an equation, uh, uh, then you need an input for uh, the displacement flame speed also. So, these two inputs are required. Okay. So, this can be obtained from the Navier-Stokes uh, equation um, uh, and this can be modeled. Okay. So, this, this uh, SD can be essentially modeled. All right. So, how do you model it? So, you can basically model it by using this uh, this linear stretch model. It, there can be numerous complicated uh, models also, but basically it assumes that the local uh, flame structure is that of same as that of a laminar flame. So, the you can say that this local flame speed SD is essentially is equal to SL which is the planar laminar flame speed minus a constant uh, called a proportionality constant called a Markstein length times curvature. Okay, time stretch rate. Sorry, so this is stretch rate, and essentially this uh, this is a Markstein length usually which is obtained from experiments or simulations, and this curvature, this this stretch rate. Sorry, this kappa, this stretch rate is essentially contains this uh, tangential strain rate, which arises from the non-uniformity of the flow velocities along the tangential plane of the flame surface, and times the planar laminar flame speed SL. Uh, here, this is, this is a essentially a model, and uh, times the uh, curvature. Uh, this is the K is the, uh, the, the K is essentially the, uh, the curvature. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, one, one model that you can use. So, uh, once you plug this in, uh, what you get is essentially uh, that, uh, that you SL minus uh, this thing, one you, once you plug this in, you essentially get SD is equal to SL minus SL, well minus LMK minus LMT, which can be essentially, we can write it as SL um, uh, times 1 uh, minus L m kappa by the curvature minus L m times a t. Okay. There are different forms available. Actually, this is a little more uh, complex. It is actually one can find as f square log f square is equal to minus 2 sigma where that is a stretch, uh, but uh, let us not go into that um, in, this, uh, in this simplified model. Okay. So, the above expression is actually valid for weak stretch limits because the model assumes a linear response of flame to stretch. And uh, the we have to note that the stretch rate expression, uh, we note that the stretch rate expression that is uh, this kappa in SL is used to keep uh, things easy for modeling and it is only an approximation. Okay. Uh, so, this is uh, the thing. And uh, so, you see that uh, we have obtained the G equation and which needs basically two things. One is the flow velocity and one is the local flame speed, mm, local displacement flame speed. The flow velocity can be obtained from the Navier-Stokes equation and whereas, this SD equation is can be modeled. And this there are different techniques to solve the G equation, but there are actually very specialized techniques to solve the G equation. Mm, uh, but uh, the one has to be very careful with the solution. There are many uh, intricate things and uh, you can refer any level set book if you want to solve this. But this gives you a very nice idea of how to basically have a ever have an idea of the overall flame structure overall complex uh, flame structure in uh, in, uh, in turbulent flows in the next um, step we'll take up this uh, this uh, uh, progress variable uh, um, uh, approach where we'll look into the uh, the brain mostly model so uh, till then thank you